Welcome to La Scuola International School. Thanks for joining us for our spotlight event about the Garden and Environmental Studies program. My name is Dunya Salar. I'm the Director of Admissions. I'm so happy that you can join us today. Um, and there are so many things that are important in a student's education. And at La Scuola, we believe that a direct experiential connection to nature and a, and a childlike wonder of this beautiful earth we live on helps students become stewards of the environment. Uh, I can definitely see it in my son, who is now in eighth grade. He has this deep knowledge and understanding of plants, insects, and other animals. And he would not have this without the countless hours of getting his hands dirty in our school gardens, uh, going on nature field trips, and as well as academic inquiries into our responsibilities in sharing our planet. But beyond that, it's really the remarkable faculty that is running this curriculum. So I'm thrilled that today some of our faculty members will speak about the Garden Studies program and be sharing what we do at La Scuola. Before I let everybody introduce themselves, just want to let you know I am recording this meeting for parents who can't join us at this time. And uh, please feel free to post any questions in the chat. We will address them after the presentation. So thank you so much. Um, Aisha, I see you on my screen next. Hi, just introducing myself and I'll speak more later, but my name is Aisha Arsavan and I am the K-5 elementary school environmental educator here. Great, Megan. Buongiorno a tutti, my name is Megan Reed and I am running the garden program over here at our early childhood uh, preschool campus and I'm also our uh, early years uh, IB curriculum coordinator. So a nice blend of, of roles for me. <laughs> Welcome to all of you. Thank you, Sally. Hi, uh, my name is Sally Meehan Peterson, Director of Teaching and Learning in the uh, K-8 program. Nice to see everyone. Great, and Fede, are you there, Federica? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Federica Lentini. I'm the Early Childhood and K2 Director of La Scuola. So welcome, everyone. Wonderful. I think we have a couple of faculty members still on yard duty. They'll be joining us and they'll introduce themselves when, they, when they're here. I'm going to get this presentation going and we're going to hear first from Aisha. All right. So am I, can you everybody hear me? All right, I would actually like to start the way I start classes when I am doing remote and could everybody take a deep breath and look out their window and just look at the sky and see what is actually happening in nature right now. Because <sighs> we're all always rushing around, but what's going on out there? I personally have gorgeous cloud formations. So it's nice to connect ourselves back to what's happening in the real world. And that is a big part of our program. I am just introducing what's going on, uh, probably because I have been the longest at La Scuola. I teach the elementary, but I started the preschool program and have been uh, shepherding uh, the middle school program, uh, some of its curriculum components. And so what I wanted to do is really the way to get a garden to come alive is to watch what's happening with the students. So we're gonna show you a video and I'm gonna set you off on your own inquiry as you watch the video, instead of me explaining what's going on. There's a few key strands that run through all our programs, preschool through eighth grade. And they're on this slide to help you remember. You're gonna have to remember these, okay? <laughs> So do whatever you need to do. You're welcome to scribble a note unless you have amazing memory. But first and foremost, as I put it on top, is building the student's connection to nature. It might be through play. We make sure they have time to play in the garden, especially in the preschool and early elementary. Um, but that playfulness shows up in other ways as they get older. Uh, we're teaching them basic garden skills since we do have a garden. You can think about what that might be. Um, we're lucky to be in this climate, so food literacy and growing food is key uh, in our program. We're also very connected with the life sciences. Uh, we call that eco-literacy uh, formally when we're talking about it, but it's basically our science curriculum. Part of it happens 
hands-on in the garden. And the last piece, of course, is using the science or understanding nature to take care of nature, which is stewardship and sustainability and um, giving uh, students skills on how to do that, as well as taking their ideas and running with them uh, as much as possible as well. Um, the other way we sort of think about all of these is, you know, connecting to nature, paying attention to nature, understanding nature, and taking care of nature. So your challenge in the next part is going to be watching a video and we've mixed them all up <laughs> is to watch for these strands and see if you can interpret what's happening. And of course, yes, there may be more than one kind of learning happening in any particular activity because of course we're trying to scaffold and integrate as much as possible. So we'll leave you to it. Dunya. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the presentation and put on the video. my heart to go back to the presentation okay well i hope everybody that gave everybody a bit of a sense of all three campuses we could of course show you hours and hours more <laughs> but just wanted to give you a sense and I hope you thought of some of the strands and watched for some of them, caught some. You're welcome to throw something in the chat if you want to. And we'll take questions at the end. Great. Grazie, Aisha. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to speaking uh, to you all a little bit about the, the preschool program and really how that comes to life on our campus here in the dog patch. So have highlighted uh, a few beautiful images, which, you know, these uh, are a few standouts, but honestly are, are things that happen every single day in the garden here. 
Um, and really kind of thinking about this is the entry point of, you know, hopefully a lifelong connection to, to nature and, and the garden really in those early years. And uh, as Aisha mentioned earlier, this, you know, the connection to nature and also I think really a big focus of, of this early time is, is just exposure and getting yourself dirty and learning about bugs and, and really understanding, um, you know, some of the basics. And as we get into a little bit older, get into DCME, um, kind of focusing a little bit more about life cycles and seeds and plants and lots of involvement um, of having the kids be involved and, in, you know, realizing what we can put into the ground to grow and depending on the season. So, so many different uh, amazing opportunities and really thinking of, you know, we have a, a dedicated garden specialist, which is myself, but at the same time, I think um, have really committed ourselves to having all of our classroom teachers feel like the garden is a place that they can go with their students and have a meaningful inquiry or just a fun, uh, open-ended exploration, have some play time, um, and that it's a really open, accessible place for everybody. Um, you know, thinking about the willingness to try new fruits and vegetables, talking a lot about the ingredients that we see in the garden, also sometimes showing up in our breakfast, lunch, or snack, um, and kind of, you know, cultivating that love of, of trying new things. And, you know, you will often see kids, you know, running around with big leaves of kale in their hands. And of course, those same kids will turn around and say they won't eat their kale in their soup or whatever it is. But, um, you know, just, uh, and I also included a few quotes here, I think, um, as we'll see a little bit in the next slide as well, um, one of the core tenets really of La Scuola is having this high image of the child, which originally comes from Reggio Emilia, um, but is also a very much you know part of the the IB primary years uh, program in terms of having the the child feel empowered and having lots of agency, and so really wanted to um, kind of you know give the children's words a lot of meaning and power in, in sharing this with you. So if you want to go ahead, Dunya. So just wanted to elaborate a little bit on some of the things I've already mentioned, but um, bringing up here a, a project that was unfolded in one of our Grandissimi classes um, a year or two ago, which is the, the four to five year old age group. So kind of right before kindergarten. And just, uh, you know, they, they did this amazing project that they ended up calling Seeds of Kindness. It was um, something that was born out of a conversation they had towards the beginning of the year with this group of students talking about agreements and kind of respecting one another in our environment. And um, actually one day the teacher kind of came up with this idea and, you know, pretended to find something in her pocket all of a sudden. And she said, look what I found. This is this amazing magical thing. And it's a seed of kindness. And it actually turned into this two month long project where the kids were looking for these seeds of kindness. They cultivated them, they drew them. It was, you know, this amazing collaboration between the classroom and the garden. Um, and, you know, this is just one classroom example, but I think wanted to, to share it with you all to highlight that this actually, this transdisciplinary learning between the garden and what's happening with our inquiry in the classroom, they're so deeply connected and uh, we're really eager to find those connections so that the garden specialists can work really closely with the classroom, depending on what their unit of inquiry is and really support that, so. Thank you, Megan. Sure. All right, and I'm back. <laughs> so yeah, I teach the kindergarten through fifth grade program. And uh, one of the things I wanted to sort of take a deep dive into right now was that we are set up at La Scuola where because we are international baccalaureate IB, a strong part of that curriculum is being transdisciplinary. Uh, so I collaborate a lot with all the units happening in the homerooms. Uh, at many levels, I have helped create them. And when we have our all faculty meetings, I have a voice as well um, at the table. Uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I have to say from my perspective that I am the art teacher and the music teacher that we all have a, a word in. And so that we're keeping environmental sciences sort of there on the radar. And on this picture, I have a few to just um, a few particular examples I'll give you. Uh, for example, in first grade, uh, which is the image of the students building something with wood um, in the garden, uh, a couple of things are happening here. One, in their classroom, they are doing a science unit on materials and studying properties of materials. And as they do that, I am talking about animal architecture with them. And as a starting provocation, it was just like, what materials can you find in this garden? What animal might come here and use them? What would they use? Why would they use it? 
again, high image of the child, what are their ideas around this instead of me just lecturing at them. Um, so everybody did different kinds of things, worked with each other in different ways, a lot of imagination. And again, connecting to one of those other strands I mentioned right at the beginning, also try to give them nature play tools. A lot of our kids are city kids. They don't necessarily have regular opportunities to just create. So I want them to be able on camping trips or in their backyard to have more ideas of what to do. Um, so a couple of agendas happening here. So that's a first grade unit on materials. Also, you saw them in the video with their vine crowns. It was play, but we were also studying ways we use plants during celebrations, during our unit on celebrations. And what might you do with a circle? Again, keeping it open-ended and some came up with wreaths, some thought of necklaces, some thought of lays, some thought of bracelets, and then they made their own. Another example on here is kindergarten, the very first picture of that fun looking face. Kindergarten is doing a unit on art and the hundred languages. And so our provocation outside was what would we use for art materials out here in the garden? And they're doing a part of their social emotional literacy curriculum is how are you feeling and why? So all our faces, we give them different feelings and told stories about why somebody was feeling the way they did. Uh, and again, at the same time, it's building their observation skills for individual items and sensory skills. What does this feel like? Why did you choose it? What else do I have happening in here? My second graders are, we're doing a unit on growth and reproduction. They are next to the bright yellow Mexican marigold flowers and collecting seeds and learning how to gather seeds and what those look like. And we'll keep studying plant life cycles. And my photo of the nature journaling uh, represents what we're doing in third, fourth, and fifth grade is um, studying indigenous plants as part of our unit on indigenous people, our native plants, building our own observation skills, learning about nature journaling. And by fifth grade, we're doing scientific illustration and what the criteria are to go into that. So again, also some underlying skills that they can apply to different subject areas. Um, Oh, and the little drawing was to help me remember stewardship. Of course, we're always leading to stewardship and everything, the end goal we're keeping our sights on. And so that beautiful drawing you can see in the corner is we are studying natural resources um, in second grade. And uh, that is part of a lesson where we were acting out where our San Francisco water comes from, which of course is the mountains and Hetch Hetchy. And after acting it out, they all illustrated their understanding of what that means that our water is coming from the mountains and the rivers. And of course, we will develop this to brainstorm ways to conserve water uh, for this river. Uh, my next slide, please, Dunia. I also wanted to touch back on the International Baccalaureate. Uh, which is La Scuola, and to share that, I don't know if you've attended some of the IB spotlights yet, but um, it has a, six themes uh, in, in preschool through fifth grade, um, including how the world works, where we are in place and time, but one of them is sharing the planet. So environmental studies is already has room for it in IB, which is one of the reasons I have been very excited to work at La Scuola not fighting to bring this into the curriculum, it is in the curriculum. So I'll just let you look really quickly yourself. Uh, one of the things we've been doing over the last few years and now I've taken on formally is vertically aligning our curriculum through the grades. Um, and so you can see how just that particular unit develops. And this is not just me and Megan, this is it happening in the homeroom. And we're diving in and helping make more connections or bringing other pieces to it. Um, but everybody will be studying, for example, in Gandhi, that Earth provides a home for people, animals, and plants and going different directions with it. You see in second grade, the water as a natural resource I was talking about, their whole unit is our connection to natural resources, brings a responsibility to protect the planet. And it's open-ended. They may decide to study forests, they may study water. Uh, they'll go in different directions based on the student's interest, the teacher's interest of what comes up. And um, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you.
Great. Again, you. there'll be questions and answers at the end for all of us. Time for that. Thank you. And I see our middle school teacher has arrived. <laughs> Hi, Travis. Hello, everyone. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Perfect. Welcome. Uh, just my name is Travis Greenlee. Uh, I am the middle school environmental studies teacher and PE and wellness teacher. Um, but my favorite environment to work in, I just love being able to work at a school where not, not only is, as Aisha was saying, you're not having to 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 fight or push or constantly petition in order to have nature education and connection with nature is to, to be something that children get to interact with, but it's part of our schedule. It's part of our mission. It's, it's part of our belief system. So to be able to have an environment like the garden at the middle school is such a wonderful thing for me. And from earliest on, and you saw in those pictures how hands-on those little ones were, it's the same thing in the middle school and it gets to an exponential level. Last year, just to share a very quick anecdote, last year, all we had was, were wood chips and the space with a fence around it. We didn't have any raised beds. We didn't even have any soil. The students not only tried to envision, but they designed and built the garden from the very, very first, from the very first like grain of soil that came in, into the garden. And they really thought through it. Then they thought through what uh, plants they wanted to, to plant. Since we're in San Francisco, they had to think about microclimates and then to think of what sunnier areas there were versus foggier areas. And they really planned it. They grew it literally from the ground up. And I was very impressed with them. Uh, you could see in that first, first photograph on the upper left-hand corner, where they're standing on a mound of soil. That is almost at the end of that soil that we had a huge mound, which was 10 cubic yards of soil. And for like two weeks, all the students six through eight worked together, really getting their hands dirty. dirty and it was, it was fully fledged legitimate farm work. And at the middle school level, this is really what we work to get, get them engaged on a, immersed on a very, very physical level. And then being able when they are in the garden to look at it at the very, very, um, look at the micro and really get very, very close. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner, another student just really fine tuning uh, how, uh, how level one of the raised beds was going to be. And now we have a, a thriving garden and it's wonderful for them to be able to observe it, see what happens in it over time. With all the wind we just had, they realized that no matter how much they watered, the plants and watered the beds, the water would evaporate really, really quickly. And so they're getting to know it like a friend, like a living organism, like their environment and their connection to one another and their connection to the environment is really what we focus on. We use the garden as an opportunity for students to experience that. So if I could have the next slide, that would be really great. Awesome. So we utilize indoor spaces, outdoor spaces, everything in order to in investigate these great questions that students have about their garden and the natural world around them. Uh, we have uh, our core tenants. I know that Aisha was just sharing a lot, of, um, a lot of our core strands, which are really, really important. And these core tenants came about this year and we really kind of... Um, Organ, really organize them. We were able to really organize the languaging that we really appreciate that reflects what we're asking students to do in the garden. First and foremost, we start with paying attention to nature, their awareness, continuing to foster and cultivate that sense of wonder. As many of you may know, I, either if you have middle schoolers or have experienced a middle schooler before, we are all middle schoolers ourselves. When we really get to that six through eight time, developmentally, it's really important to be able to hold on to that, that sense of childlike wonder. And we really work hard at La Scuola in order to keep that going with the students um, so that they are always asking questions without having to have the answers. Connecting to nature, their response to deeper investigation, starting to ask why, starting to wonder why and look for evidence that could help support their own thoughts and their own questions. Forming an understanding, forming a theory, forming an idea of what they're looking for, of what they see and why. Um, and then whatever, what comes next really falls in our, our stewardship um, element, which is taking informed action, the what now question. And that's one that especially our seventh and eighth graders engage in all of the time. How are we going to now respond? How are we going to make what we've learned 
a part of our own action as individuals, as global citizens and as local citizens. And so it's a really wonderful full process, anything from the research to really getting our hands deep in the earth and um, noticing what we can about the world around us, especially as it seems so chaotic once we leave the walls of the school. Um, I would like to also just offer, and I think this is a nice transition to the next presenter, is uh, we have these wonderful garden spaces and we also make sure with the students from the, vi from the very youngest ages to the very oldest ages to be looking for nature everywhere. The, the trees that they walk by every single day, what's growing between the cracks on the sidewalks, being able to understand why does it survive there? Are they adaptations? Is it because of their root system that they're able to, to, to thrive there? What is it? Um, and being able to invest ourselves in the nature beyond the walls of the school. The city is our school is our campus. And so especially in the mission, which is where the middle school is, we, since we started here, we've always tried to see this, uh, this area as an extended campus. And so investigating nature within and beyond is really important to us. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Travis. Hi, right, Sally. So, and I welcome um, Aisha, Megan, and Travis to jump in, but I'll um, share a little bit about our field trips and then our extended field trips um, in outdoor education that last up to a week. Uh, so these are opportunities, whether we're in preschool, elementary, and middle school, um, when the students with their envir environmental studies, educators, and homeroom or single subject teachers can go side by side out into the field taking these inquiries you know, from stewardship and life sciences to nature connection and play. Uh, so they'll head into the field. It could be for an afternoon, it could be for a full day or for an extended period overnight for a full week. And uh, this is where the students are researching. They're making connections to all those classroom discussions or discussions in the garden. Um, they're teaching others quite often uh, when they're in uh, group settings and with other peers um, and other educators, and um, they're taking action um, in many of these um, settings. Um, I would also like to link um, again to our um, IB uh, International Baccalaureate uh, program that when the students, whether it's starting in preschool, elementary, or middle school, they're introduced to the IB learner profile. And these are 10 attributes that um, are um, just aspects that a student's gonna develop throughout their years at La Scuola. And so they would be um, you know, working on being a risk taker and open-minded and a communicator and building their knowledge. So this goes hand in hand to their uh, field work and um, leading the school walls. So in this slide, we see um, some uh, local and Bay Area field trips um, to the Golden Gate Park at um, a lake to right nearby the campus, Alamo Square. Um, they've head up to Lagunitas Creek um, in Marin County um, and also to Coyote Hills Regional Park. Um, and we can move to the next slide and then again at some point um, I should feel free to jump in. Here are the overnight trips. We introduce, so field trips are all the years and parent volunteers would, would join the class as needed. With the overnight trips that start in for fourth grade, it's the uh, educators and the children that lead. And um, in fourth grade, it's one night and it's right over the Golden Gate Bridge and Marin Headlands. And then we start expanding the time and the distance. Uh, and so it's a gradual process. Um, and so here we see the Marin Headlands and then moving up to West Sonoma, a five day uh, trip uh, to the um, uh, organization called CYO, Christian Youth Organization. It's uh, secular, however. And I think we have one more slide. And another um, is our trip to Yosemite. Um, it was a sixth grade trip. Um, and then that's four or five days. Um, again, bring that inquiry, the four, five, six weeks of discussion and research 
um, to a culmination. And um, this was tied in this case to a fire ecology unit as well as a photography unit. Sally, if I could just chime in on that right there. As we were preparing for the, uh, the Yosemite trip for the, for the sixth grade, the fire ecology unit of inquiry is what is the main focus of the trip. Prior to that, we definitely start setting the stage in our environmental studies classes and in the garden so that the students have an opportunity to really expand and they feel oriented. Um, and that's a big part about these trips too. It's not just the only experience that happens is when you get there, it's how you prepare before, and then there's the during, and then it, there's the after part. So it becomes a fully integrated part of the student experience. Great, thank you so much. Um, here's the last fun photo. As we move to our q and I will stop sharing my screen now. So feel free to uh, post questions in the chat, or if you like, you can um, just unmute yourself and uh, and speak to us all. No burning questions right now. I see one here. Current parent of a kindergartner. Okay, I'm also an alum of the International Baccalaureate Program. Enjoyed one in the garden and the house. I just find that well. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Talia. <laughs> thank you. Oh, the testimonial. <laughs> thank you. All right. Love it. Yeah, some of the questions. Okay, I'm gonna uh, bring up some questions that usually come up. Like, for instance, people ask us. Um, okay, keep them easy then, Donia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. People uh, ask us. No, we we like the difficult questions, Aisha. Um, how much time do uh, the students typically spend in the garden? Uh, I can speak for the elementary school. They have a class. A scheduled class is once a week for forty five minutes. And as part of our Reggio uh, belief, uh, we have uh, the half classes at a time to keep it smaller. And if they want to come uh, a bit extra um, during recess, if there's not another class happening, uh, I welcome them in. Kind of depends on what else is going on. Uh, but there's always a few who like to pop on in for a little bit of extra time. So 45 minutes once a week. I think I said that. <laughs> And I can speak to the middle school. It's uh, it's relatively the same as Aisha was just mentioning for the middle schoolers that uh, they have one class with me a week, and we've actually been able to work out getting it up to about forty five minutes. It was slightly shorter, and I, not only were we looking for more time for the students, but the students were hoping for more time. So I think their advocacy of the program also supported that. So about 45 minutes, one one class a week, and I will also just add to that the environmental studies program uh, in, in the middle school is a unit of study that is a part of the broader sciences program. So if you're wondering as a parent where that falls, where environmental studies sort of falls within our, our academic areas, it is, um, it is coordinated through our science program. Jump out of order and uh, close us off with the timing for the preschool, but um... Yeah, the, the frequency with which the, the preschool classes go to the garden is usually about once a week. We try to keep it in smaller groups. So um, outside of COVID times, classes are between 18 and 21 students. We usually try to break up the class into about three groups. So no more than usually six kids for kind of a, a small group inquiry focused activity. Um, one uh, amazing silver lining of the kind of adjustments that we've made to accommodate COVID right now is that um, the garden has actually become one of kind of our outdoor play spaces. And so we've made some changes in terms of having some open free kind of materials there as well. So actually right now the students are going more than ever um, and most classes are actually going to the garden every single day, so. Thank you. So there are a couple of questions on the chat. One is about uh, the process every year for replanting the garden and the different growing periods. How does that work? as well as volunteer work in the garden after actual study periods. Aisha, do you want to address that? Sure. Um, and maybe, Christina, you can uh, clarify a little bit more about what you're trying to find out if I don't answer it. Uh, basically, the students do all the replanting. 
uh, they're basically in charge of the garden. As I keep telling them, I'm like, it's their responsibility. I'm here as your teacher, not the one who takes care of the garden. You know, uh, you're, you're learning how to do it. So they plant everything. Uh, they harvest everything. It's all for them. Uh, they, uh, we don't have designated beds per classroom. Uh, partly because we've never had a big enough garden, but also that's given me the opportunity to really build in that understanding of this is a shared resource, which is such a huge part of environmental thinking anyway. And our garden is where we can start that thinking. And just right from the beginning, we just had some lemons with the kindergartners and we spent one whole lesson just discussing how many lemons were there, how many students at the school, how should we figure this out? And what's wonderful for me to see them as they get older and even on field trips, nobody's just grabbing things without checking or seeing how much there is. We build that into art classes as well, the idea of sustainability. Uh, you want a flower? Well, look at the bush first. Um, is it teeming with flowers? Is it gonna supply our pollinators and ourselves? Okay, that's not quite the question. Sorry, going off on a tangent. Um, but it's also connected, as you can see, you know, you're doing multiple things as you're teaching any topic. Um, and if they want to come in and volunteer at some other time, um, usually we have sort of uh, a few quick tasks that are regularly that need to be done and they know those based on their age level. And Travis will spell, tell you his system, which is great too for the older students. And uh, with mine, it's mostly, uh, can we water? I'm like, yep, go for it. And older kids, but, uh, second grade, we start introducing moisture meters as a water saving technique. So they will know to go check something, the moisture and then go water accordingly. Yeah, every single day, uh, even at, at drop off, I usually have a gaggle of fifth graders or fourth graders or sixth graders usually just wanting to come in and check and see the progress. And it's one thing that Aisha and I definitely, because we, we have an opportunity to work in the same space uh, at least once a week, is what do you notice? What do you wonder, but what do you notice? And uh, especially with all of the rain, they love to see the things as they've changed over time. And as Aisha is mentioning about moisture meters, just understanding proper tool care and usage um, so that they can come in and really um, tend to the garden on their own. Uh, usually students just have to ask for permission before entering the space, just so we know who is in there. Um, but there's plenty of time during recesses as well in order to volunteer. We have help from parents, especially when we're away on breaks, but I would love to emphasize that it's just for watering. We really discourage parents from uh, from digging from digging in the garden or even doing any weeding because we'd love to save all of that work for the students because it is a thriving garden. First and foremost, it's a learning garden and it's for the students to see the good, the bad and the ugly and try to work with that. Great. And you know, they're also just to add on, they're welcome to often go in the garden as long as they ask without um, having to actually do a volunteer job. Uh, if they want to hang out and play in the mud box some more or find some more seeds or follow up on the building of the, you know, beaver lodge or whatever they were doing. If we, you know, give them more time for nature connection when we can too. There was another question about, uh, does the school offer encourage student volunteer opportunities in environmental fields? I can speak to one thing we're doing. Um, did we lose, Travis probably had to go. Yeah. Um, and I can speak a little bit to the middle school too. Um, so far, uh, one of our big projects is in third grade when we have a unit on ecosystems, uh, which is a homeroom unit, again, under sharing the planet. Uh, but with me, a uh, big project they do is participate in a restoration project over in Marin. Uh, Spawn is a salmon protection network. I don't know if anybody knows them in Lagunitas Creek. So we plant uh, natives for them every year, it depends on what it is. Some years it's redwoods, this year we're planting coast live oak. And in a non-COVID year, we're able to take a field trip there, deliver our proud seedlings to their huge restoration nursery, see what's going on in terms of planting efforts and participate and work on the creek and do different things there. So that's a big one for elementary school. Um, and the middle school, we got kind of cut short by the pandemic. Uh, we were just starting to build our ideas around it. Our middle school, as you may have heard, is a very new, and we're just starting to 
think of ideas and what's possible and reaching out. And this would have been our first year. Last spring would have been our first year and we've been kind of shut down and on pause. So we'll see what comes. Things will come because of course we're all very motivated to do that as is our division head over at the middle school is very interested. So we're looking at some projects involving the bay uh, or the ocean and start connecting them to the broader environment in middle school years. Great. Thank you, Aisha. There's another uh, question about, does the school teach cooking? Um, Sally, do you wanna address that? I know we have some uh, enrichment classes that focus on food and food prep and things like that. And, but I know we have some future plans around that too. Right, uh, currently in, um, on the element, the lower elementary campus and actually in the elementary middle school, we do not have that commercial ki kitchen yet, but that is in our uh, future plans. I know there's a lot of raw and students will, when possible, will you know, a harvest from the garden. And so there's the experience of the food in its raw state. Um, um, and as Dunya said, we do have after school um, programs in non COVID times that really make that connection um, to the children's learning about, um, you know, food literacy and, and food and um, preparing meals. So currently not yet. Uh, as far as I know, the future building is going to have a food atelier. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. I'll jump in really quickly about preschool. We don't have necessarily a, a formal kind of setup for that either. But um, last year did a, a year long unit with a, a bunch of the different classrooms about kind of where your food comes from and um, had a really neat opportunity to make some own recipes and do lots of drawings and kind of share that. There's also um, a week that we love to celebrate um, here at the Pre-K, which is the week of Italian, the Italian kitchen, Settimana della Cucina Italiana. So in the past, we have made homemade pasta with the kids on that week and um, had kind of a, a really interesting um, campus-wide exploration of you know Italian food and all the amazing traditions and uh, recipes and stories that come with that. So. All right. Oh, some good questions. Thank you. Any, any, anything else? We're at about 1.15. So we're still here for a couple more minutes. If you have to go, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to all the faculty and staff too.